Welcome back to the third part of our review of the history of speculative zoology. So far we've looked at the origin of speculative animals in the time machine, the iconic works of Dougal Dixon, as well as some of the more recent TV shows that feature hypothetical organisms, such as The Future is Wild and Primeval. Now we're again continuing right where we left off last time as we examine some more of the newer Spexu projects. First of all, we come to a book called All Tomorrows. This is another speculative zoology work similar to some we've talked about before, namely First and Last Men and Man After Man, as it is another exploration of the future of humanity and the multiple species that descend from us. All Tomorrows was authored by the incredibly imaginative C. M. Kozman under the pen name of Nemo Ramjet, and Kozman is also known for other speculative evolution works such as the fantastic Snyad alien ecosystem and All Yesterdays, which we'll talk about very soon. Anyway, in All Tomorrows we start with humans pretty much as we are today, and we see how Mars is gradually colonised. Centuries pass, and eventually a war between Earth and Mars occurs when the Martians want independence. Due to the nature of this interplanetary war, which involves massive catastrophic attacks on both planets, over 8 billion people are killed before peace is achieved. After the war, a new species of human is genetically engineered, called the Star People, which are designed to go out and explore space. Our entire solar system and several others are colonised by this post-human species, and the Star People become dominant over known space. Although alien life has been encountered during the expansion into the final frontier, none of it is sentient at that point, until on one planet the fossil of a creature descended from a Therisnosaur dinosaur is uncovered. This indicates that an even more ancient civilization than the Star People exists somewhere, and at some point in the past brought an Earth animal to an alien planet, and so they start arming themselves ready for a potential conflict. These sentient aliens are eventually encountered, and they're known as the Q. As masters of nanotechnology and genetic engineering, the Q destroy the entire empire of the Star People, and genetically modify the remaining survivors so that they no longer have sentience. Eventually the Q move on, and in time many of the remaining post-humans regain sentience as they evolve, giving rise to a number of different species that all manage to contact one another again, a theme also explored in First and Last Men. However, a race of sentient machines that was created by one of the species then exterminates all the post-humans, destroying their rebuilt empire. The machines are eventually stopped by another descendant of the Star People that had actually managed to avoid the Q, the Astromorphs, and after all this, the Astromorphs start recolonizing the galaxy yet again, and another empire is formed and remains until every post-human species disappears for unknown reasons. All Tomorrows is essentially like an even more ambitious and large-scale First and Last Men, featuring some brilliant illustrations by C. M. Kozman himself, as well as very imaginative stages in the evolution of post-human species. No matter how realistic you might find the events of the story, and indeed there are parts that seem relatively plausible to me, just reading about Kozman's vision of the future sparks creativity and curiosity, despite there not necessarily being any direct, technical educational purpose to it like some of Dixon's stuff. Anyway, after All Tomorrows we come to a book called All Yesterdays. Published in 2012 and authored by John Conway, the previously mentioned CM Kozman, and Darren Naish, this project was actually a sort of turning point in the history of paleoart itself, as well as involving some elements of speculative zoology. The book examines how reconstructions of prehistoric life have changed through the years as our understanding has developed, and then proceeds to feature numerous reconstructions of extinct organisms featuring hypothetical but plausible and informed aspects of biology. This includes images showing things such as Majungasaurus camouflaging itself as a log, some beefy Parasaurolophus, and a group of adorably fluffy Lianosaurus. There's also a brilliant section at the end examining what modern day animals might be reconstructed as looking like by future scientists if they made similar mistakes to the ones our species has made with interpreting ancient animals. So while it's not exactly speculative zoology in the sense of the other projects we've talked about so far, it utilises a more data informed speculation by portraying known animals with hypothetical soft tissues or behaviours. But this brings us on to the next part of this history. In 2013, a sequel to All Yesterdays was published, All Your Yesterdays. This book, which is free to download online, features artwork from numerous paleoartists who submitted their work to be used, and provides an explanation for the speculations made that resulted in the images you see. 
This is another excellent project containing some incredibly imaginative ideas, such as tyrannosaurs displaying like bowerbirds, and the previously mentioned dinosauroids riding an iguanodontian with a pet featherless dromaeosaur as a sort of tribute to that concept. It also includes a speculative reconstruction of a Denisovan, a close hominin relative of ours, that's made to resemble a kind of polar Neanderthal, basically a take on the Yeti. But the most remarkable thing about All Your Yesterdays has to be the speculative animal that turned out to have actually once existed. Artist John Messeros illustrated a unique take on the bizarre Cambrian stem arthropods known as Anomalocarids by speculating that some of these organisms may have evolved filter feeding methods. Well, as it turned out, this was more than just a plausible idea, since in 2014 a suspension feeding Anomalocarid from the early Cambrian was actually described. In honour of Messeros's speculative Ceti Caris, as he called it, the new group containing the real animal was named Ceteocaridae. Now, since the age of the internet arrived, and everyone's been able to more easily share their ideas around, there have been quite a few people and groups working to produce their own speculative worlds filled with alternate animals, much like the style of Dougal Dixon. These include ventures such as the Speculative Dinosaur Project, which had a similar concept to the new dinosaurs, in which the end Cretaceous extinction never took place and all sorts of modern dinosaur descendants now rule the Earth. This was an incredibly ambitious undertaking involving a number of people, and it aimed to basically provide a more scientifically accurate version of Dixon's original book. The Speculative Dinosaur Project, nicknamed Spec, was going to be presented from the point of view of an expedition that entered this alternate timeline and examined its inhabitants, and many illustrations and explanations of their creatures were produced. Work on Spec mostly took place from about 2001 to 2006, but I'm including it at this point in the history since it's technically sort of still ongoing, although progress has slowed down a great deal and pretty much stopped as far as I'm aware. It looks as if a book about the world of Spec was planned to be published, but this has not happened yet, though I hope one day it does get finished. Then there's also the Neocene Project, which initially started as a way to connect the first time period of the future is wild with the Earth scene in After Man, but it eventually became its own unique future world based 25 million years from now. Additionally, from paleontologist Darren Nash, who I've mentioned a couple of times already, there's the Squamozoic, an alternative timeline in which the Squamates, lizards, snakes, and Amphisbanians, took over as the dominant group after the end of the Mesozoic, and have since radiated out into various niches occupied by different animals today. Another very unique and interesting speculative zoology project is Serena, a natural history of the world of birds. This concept involves a very few number of species being introduced to a terraformed moon. Grasses, species of flowering plants, guppies, and various insects are used to establish an ecosystem, but the main focus of the project is the evolution of the single land vertebrate present on the moon, the domestic canary. Documenting the evolution of these organisms and the way in which the world changes up to and beyond 250 million years since they were first introduced, Serena is an incredibly detailed and fascinating project that features some very creative and utterly brilliant species that evolve as the canaries radiate out to fill all the niches available to them on this new world. And it still counts as speculative zoology since it's looking at animal evolution, despite it taking place on an alien world. Another notable project found on the internet is artist Joshua Knupper's Dragons of the World. In this concept, dragons are portrayed as a real existing group of varanoid reptiles, closely related to monitor lizards, that have survived since the Cretaceous, and it explores what realistic dragon anatomy and evolution could be like. There are numerous other works out there on the internet, and not only entire world-building projects, but also individual speculative animals. And of course, this is not even including the various alien and non-zoological speculative works. A good place to find these sorts of amazing projects and designs for speculative creatures is DeviantArt, where all kinds of incredibly talented and imaginative people are able to share their concepts for hypothetical organisms. Then there's also the website Sivatherium, which I'll link to down below, a site that includes a collection of all kinds of speculative evolution works. It's a really great place that's proved very useful to look at while making these videos, and if you're interested in finding even more speculative works that I haven't managed to mention here, I would absolutely recommend checking it out. Anyway, moving back to more mainstream productions, you could probably even count the 2011 TV show Terra Nova as speculative zoology, since this series, in which humanity travelled back in time to the Cretaceous in order to start up civilization again, did include some fictitious dinosaur species. Creatures such as the Slashers, 
Nycoraptors, and the Empirosaur, some sort of imagined Spinosaurid. Again, the 2013 film After Earth, which has nothing to do with the animals of After Man, contains some speculative future creatures that have taken back the planet after humans left. Giant monkeys and giant condors are some of those featured. So, although we appear to be in a slight lull between mainstream speculative zoology projects since productions such as The Future is Wild, Primeval and Terra Nova ended, there is always a background presence of speculative zoology fans, especially, as I mentioned before, since the internet has enabled groups of people to collaborate more easily on large-scale world-building, and people are now able to share their ideas more freely without having to get a book published or a TV show produced. Hopefully we'll one day soon see a return of major spec zoo works, perhaps if an After Man film is ever created, and when they do return, there will certainly be an audience for it, since this brilliant and entertaining topic seems to have a pretty constant appeal. Now, before I end this video, I would like to make some honourable mentions of a few things I either forgot to include in the last videos or couldn't figure out a good position to put them in the order of entries. First, the land that time forgot. Not only did Time forget about it, but I did too. It's another novel by Edgar Rice Burroughs, first published in book form in 1924, with a sort of similar concept to the world of Pellucidar, except there's a mysterious island instead of an underground area. On the island, called Kaspak, there are all kinds of prehistoric animals, such as tyrannosaurs, woolly mammoths, pterosaurs, and many more, as well as various groups of humans, including a tribe of flying humans called the Wiru. Next, Godzilla. I wasn't sure whether to include this or not, but I thought I should at least mention it, since this organism is generally considered to be a late surviving radioactive giant theropod dinosaur. I'm sure most of you probably know the history of Godzilla, beginning with the first film in 1954 where he was acting as a metaphor for nuclear warfare, and the science and anatomy of this creature has actually been explored quite a few times by different people over the years. Clearly, Godzilla is not exactly the most plausible of speculative animals, but perhaps an examination of the biomechanics and evolution of this creature would make for a fun video in the future. Dinotopia is another project that I saw comments about including. The first book in the series was published in 1992, and it involves an island where sentient dinosaurs and humans have worked together to create a civilization. Though there's not necessarily any visible speculative evolutionary changes to the animals that are a part of the series, it's still worth a mention. Not only is there a book series of Dinotopia featuring some very nice artwork, but also a couple of live-action TV shows, an animated film, and a few video games. More alternate dinosaur evolution has appeared in TV too, as there's an episode of Star Trek Voyager, a show I personally love by the way, in which the descendants of a dinosaur species that left Earth millions of years ago are encountered by the Voyager crew on the other side of the galaxy. The episode, called Distant Origin, featured paleontologists from this dinosaur species investigating where they had come from, and it turns out that they are a highly derived kind of parasaurolophus like hadrosaur. Then there's also the book Evolution by Stephen Baxter, which follows the evolution of humans from our ancestors before the Cretaceous mass extinction, up until the last primates die out 500 million years in the future, and there are a few speculative animals featured. More speculative dragons next, as there was a 2004 documentary style film that I forgot to mention, called The Last Dragon in Some Countries, and in others, Dragons, A Fantasy Made Real. This project, which thankfully made it clear that it was a fictional documentary, explored how dragons lived and behaved in various times throughout history, including back in the Cretaceous when they fought Tyrannosaurs, because what else was there to do back then? There's also a modern day setting in which the frozen remains of a dragon are discovered, and the show interprets these animals as a lineage of biologically plausible reptiles. On that note, does that mean the Dragonology book series also counts as speculative zoology, since it similarly treats these creatures as a clade of reptiles? Anyway, it was pointed out to me that in the last video discussing The Future is Wild, I forgot to mention the animated TV series that came out in 2007 and ran for 26 episodes until 2008. The story features a person from 10,000 years in the future, joined by three kids from the present, searching the far future for a new place for our species to survive, and it includes a number of the speculative organisms from the original show, such as the Squibbon. Another entry that I wasn't sure where to really put, but that I'll mention anyway, is Cryptozoologicon Volume 1, authored by Conway, Kozman, and Naish. This book is an exploration of various cryptids, creatures such as Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and Deloy's Ape, and what their biology would be like if they were actual real animals. 
Next, I saw a comment suggesting that Pixar's The Good Dinosaur could potentially be considered speculative zoology, since it's another, arguably less plausible take on the whole non-avian dinosaurs never went extinct thing. Switching media a bit here, I also saw people saying that Evolution by North Star Games should be included, as it's a board game in which players create their own speculative animals in order to adapt to a changing environment. There's a huge variety of potential species that can arise, and so every game is different, and it's apparently even been used at Oxford University and featured in the journal Nature. Recently a video game version was also released for iOS, Android and Steam too. And finally, another speculative evolution game is Species, Artificial Life, Real Evolution. Available on Steam, this is a sort of simulation of realistic evolutionary processes that looks very fun, though I'm not sure if the organisms are actually animals or what, so whether or not you'd count it as speculative zoology is unclear. Well, there we go then. The history of speculative zoology, more or less. I certainly wasn't expecting this to become such a massive project when I started making it, or even to have the massive success it seems to have gotten, but I'm very pleased that everyone's enjoyed this series and become so engaged in this wonderful art form. I'm certainly open to making some more videos on more specific and different parts of speculative evolution in the future, so if you have some ideas for what kind of speculative content you'd like to see from us, please do let us know in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.